Hello YouTubers, Dave Soriano, the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Pennsylvania, and uh, I'm capturing some uh, imagery of um, paint formulations that I'm preparing. Let's see if we're uh, still connected. Okay. All right. Now, we're getting there. There we are. Um, I'm going to go to full screen. And uh, we're starting to capture footage using the geos and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, digital microscope. I have uploaded a prior review of it it's twenty dollars plus postage us dollars on uh, amazon.com and i found it's very helpful well anyway what you are seeing here are some uh, test paint formulations i'm preparing in pasto technique uh, these are commercial acrylic paints i'm magnifying here uh, with the digital microscope about a hundred times the foundation is cardstock, 140 pound uh, Bristol cardstock. Um, I have no undercoat. And uh, what I have formulated is, uh, as I said, the commercial acrylic paint. You can see some of it in this container. We'll zoom in on it later. And uh, it is uh, mixed with emulsifying petrolatum. And uh, people commonly know Vaseline uh, petroleum jelly, but we are preparing here synthetic petrolatum formulations that uh, are emulsifying, and we try to use re renewable materials. So I'm testing out one material today, and uh, it contains an N-butyl ester of castor oil, water, uh, dibenzilidine sorbitol non-ionic surfactant uh, it's oil added uh, to water uh, tripropylene glycol uh, an emulsifying wax which really is not a wax it's commercial it's uh, a long chain alcohol uh, sterile alcohol let's say with uh, uh, a detergent like SDS well anyway we uh, will upload the procedure on that and uh, how to prepare it and uh, we mix that with the acrylic paint and uh, I add of all things gold bond foot powder which is talcum and the talc uh, contains acacia zinc oxide and so other materials it helps brush flow tremendously and uh, it creates the stucco effect which you can see here so this is a, uh, a lighter green color and uh, this was applied to the surface uh, about 20 minutes ago. And I wanna see what it will look like tomorrow, a week from now, and after testing with ultraviolet light and uh, other physical or chemical methodologies. And uh, I will also be putting a top coat of Aquazole. And uh, I've been gifted Aquazole from a company that manufactures it. Uh, various molecular weights. It's a water-soluble material, and uh, I will be applying that as a varnish and seeing if re reflectivity increases in uh, the painted surface. Let's take a look at another sample. This is a little bit darker, and there is, uh, with this one, an undercoat of um, crepaz, oil pastel, and uh, then we have the paint formulation applied to the surface and uh, it almost looks like you're looking at the surface of uh, mercury or venus what have you uh, even parts of the earth uh, western united states it's really fascinating it's an excellent microscope for twenty dollars uh, plus postage i got it in about three days it can uh, it can uh, magnify anywhere from 40 up to a thousand times. Here's another sample we'll look at. Now this one 
has had uh, the aquasol applied to the surface and uh, that provides some degree of reflectance. You can see how the surface has been modified by applying this uh, varnish and uh, definitely, definitely uh, different quality to it. And that was applied as a rather saturated aqueous solution. The Aquazole, uh, you allow it to dissolve at room temperature. If you go above 70 degrees Celsius, it actually will lose its solubility. You know, calcium hydroxide is like that too. You have to chill it to make it more soluble. So um, definitely we can see a difference with the addition of the Aquasol. Now here's another one that has had it added. And uh, oh yeah, there's a definite difference. And I guess I should have a control so we can see it before and after application, but there's a definite difference. And uh, we have reflectance spectroscopy, so I'll be able to de determine the degree of reflection uh, with the application of the Aquasol. Uh, this one has not had it applied and you can see it's a little bit more distinct. And uh, I just find these paint formulations fascinating. And I'm an amateur artist, uh, self-trained, but I'm very interested in uh, preparing and trying to give some character to acrylic paints. Compared to the noble oil paints, the acrylics, of course, uh, we don't know how acrylics are gonna hold up in 100 years. You know, they're still relatively new. So um, we're trying different petrolatum materials and uh, I'm actually trying out one we prepared earlier today. Um, we prepared one uh, about two hours ago and I told the student, um, I said, I wanna try that right away and I thought it was tremendous and it's a white petrolatum so we don't have any interfering color. This has had the Aquasol applied to it move it over this way and uh, so this is a preliminary video and uh, as we progress uh, we will be trying uh, also halloy site uh, a, a natural tubular member of the kaolin family a company in idaho uh, gifted me i minerals incorporated in idaho hayden idaho uh, gifted me uh, some of their halloy site, kaolin, and I'll be trying that uh, instead of the gold bond powder. I'll be trying different materials to create a light or heavy stucco effect. And uh, we'll also have samples without uh, any kaolin or talcum powder added. So that's where we're at with this. And uh, here's a sample uh, that was prepared paired yesterday and this one uh, did not have any kaolin or material added. Now you see those particles you might say what's causing that and that is a different petrolatum which had a little bit of dried linseed oil. Now linseed oil it doesn't really lose water it polymerizes because of its chemical structure it's a diallelic and uh, it's been known for five six hundred years that linseed oil uh, will in time dry, polymerize, and create a protective film. So those are small particles of uh, thin film polymerized linseed oil. And that is another way to create a light impasto technique with such a petrolatum. Now I don't, normally don't use linseed oil or walnut oil, drying oil, because I have acrylics and that's your bonder. So the acrylic emulsion uh, is, it, it, it's, uh, when that loses water, uh, the, uh, the polyacrylic uh, forms the uh, bonding agent. So I don't need, it's redundant to have the linseed oil there. Now I've done this also with oil-based paints. And of course, uh, with an oil-based paint, then I certainly would be using linseed oil and uh, I've also worked with gouache and watercolor and we also make azo uh, dyes and pigments by a grind method and we'll be uh, capturing footage of these as well. 
So anyway, this will give you an idea of the type of research I'm conducting right now uh, in creating novel paint formulations. And I hope you find this uh, interesting. And if you have any questions, you can contact me if you'd like to collaborate on this. If you're an artist and you want to try some of these materials, we can certainly see if we can arrange that. And uh, in any event, uh, I'll be posting additional material as I progress. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.